Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her father and I. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer, please? Father, we thank you that you have given us life, life in your Son. And we thank you for this life, to live here now. And in this life, to choose someone to live the rest of our days out with. And I thank you for Jordan and Rachel. I thank you for the life that you have brought them into. I thank you to celebrate today with them. Thank you for the family and friends that are here. Father, we pray that you will do within their lives something amazingly wonderful for yourself. Thank you for the opportunity to share in this special day, their day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Just to remind you, Rachel made today for you, uh, you got married on July the 9th, 2011, at 7-9-11, odd numbers, and uh, married at 3-30. So you should be able to remember this day pretty easily. But years from now, don't be upset, Rachel, if he thinks you got married on August the 10th, the year 2012. Uh, this is your day. Today, you become husband and wife. I want to commend both of you for multiple things. I want to thank you for your faithfulness. Your faithfulness for this day has been an example to all of us, and I thank you for that. You've actually gone against all odds. Uh, you went against all odds in getting to know each other uh, early on, going through Castle Junior High and Castle High School and through college and throw in a few jobs and add families and friends and everything else. And the point is that you've seen good and bad times. And when I look at the two of you, your commitment to each other and then to God defines why today is so special. And I just want to take a time to uh, reflect on a little bit to each of you. Jordan, I want to thank you for being a friend to our son. We were in the for four years all through high school, and we just had a blast. I'll never forget the four years that seven of us shared as a leader. And uh, there were several things that I can't share, Rachel, but some of which that I will draw attention to. Uh, I will say that we laughed so hard that some people fell out of chairs. Uh, we, uh, we had a, a lot to eat and drink, and Jordan's preference of drinks was lemonade every single Wednesday. Uh, whenever we had snacks, the guys would choose snacks to bring, and Rachel, I'll tell you that Jordan makes a mean cheese dip. And uh, it was a favorite by the group when uh, we got together. I focused on scripture that was taught each Wednesday night, but I know that there were more important lessons that we have learned that we were all taught as we experienced life together. It left a big impact on our lives, and I thank you for being a part of that group, Jordan. To one extreme, it was pretty light. Yes, we tried to find out where we could get the extra screen so everybody in the group could have an Xbox controller. Eight of us in total. At many overnighters, and most of the time, all-nighters. <laughs> but then to a, a lighter, a deeper side, a life-changing extreme, we experienced mission trips to Mexico. Uh, you've been to Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, service projects, service projects at Crossroads in our community. We did landscaping at a nursing home. Uh, we covered a roof of a home that experienced a tornado in Newburgh. So many times we learned that a lot of money can be spent just to have fun. But we also learned that a lot of things that cost us were an investment of how the Holy Spirit taught us in our lifetime. Jordan, we knew that you were always welcome in our home. You still are. 
and now both of them are. Rachel, since we had an all-boys group, <laughs> uh, you were not necessarily invited to the group, but uh, you and I did not get to know each other quite as well as Jordan and I did. But I've enjoyed you and your family. I've enjoyed spending time laughing about things, talking about things. And our connection uh, first came when I found out there was a young man that liked somebody, became a boyfriend to somebody. Uh, much later, uh, you became his fiance, and today, his wife. Though our connection, Rachel, is maybe not as deep, hopefully through Jordan's life and now your marriage, that you will both experience an even deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, hopefully our investment into uh, Jordan will become something that will be our investment even into you. Rachel, Jordan loves you. I will have to tell you that he would say to me so many times with this phrase, you know where Rach and I are going or what we're going to be doing? Or he would have been so proud to indicate how well you did in college. And he was extremely proud of your work, work you did there. But that was always followed up with the words, isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> he said that because he was proud of you. You worked really hard, and he was very proud of you. Now, coming from this man, that was a big compliment. <laughs> Let this man, your husband, who always has that mischievous smile, become your knight in shining armor. Jordan, Rachel loves you. Being with you means more to her than anything else on earth. Treat her like your princess. She looks up to you for spiritual direction. So plan your life of a marriage, not just around God, but become the leader in your family to plan your lives for God. As children, you come together because you are children of the living God. And you are loved beyond your ability to even understand this. Though, I pray that someday that you will get a glimpse of his love for you as you raise a little one in your own lives. Through the eyes of a little one, you will see and begin to see how deep God's love is for you. Or maybe even how deep your parents' love are for you right now. Long before this day, you were little yourselves. And God had started to craft your relationship way back then. Only God can create and then place each of you at the right moment to complete each other. Rachel, both you and Jordan have been blessed to have time to spend with each other. Not too many people that get married are so blessed as what you guys are. And what's wonderful about that is there's no surprises in this relationship. You know each other. You've spent time with each other. You've laughed together. You've enjoyed this life. This has been a very encouragement to me, and I am thankful that you've been so open with each other. As difficult as it can be to continue to be open, be honest with each other. It'll bless both of you in multiple ways. Jordan, continue to be open with Rachel about everything. Your transparency will go a long way to demonstrate how much you love her. So many people do not desire to remain open or transparent, and not being transparent creates a wedge of unresolved issues. So please hear this. Communicate, 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 and even if Rachel knows, communicate. Many issues can be resolved. We just had a healthy dose of communication. A loving, understanding form of communication will go a long way for you to understand unconditional love. Jordan, one of the best things you can do for Rachel is to love her unconditionally. This means loving Rachel not on your terms or even on her terms, but on God's terms. You love her the way she needs to be loved. I did not say that loving Rachel this way is the best thing that you could do, but it is an important thing. Jordan, Rachel, you remember in my office, me drawing a triangle, and Jordan was on the left of that triangle, and Rachel, you were on the right side of that triangle, and 
At the top of the triangle, I had God's name. Too many times in a relationship, we try to get closer to each other on the bottom of that. But the more you become like God, and the more you ascend to the top of that triangle, the more you become like who he is, then you'll be able to love this other person that God is giving to you. You'll learn what love's all about. For example, in the 1 Corinthians 13, it's going to be sharing what love is and what love is, love is not. And instead of trying to display patience, I want you to learn to understand patience. Understand patience by accepting God and loving Him first. Because when you love God first, His love will bring about these wonderful qualities into this relationship. And those negative qualities will more easily be avoided. Jordan, Rachel, a lot of us as couples are striving to become more patient in our marriages. But here's the issue. If we're striving, usually it'll never happen. It is like seeking an item in the store to improve us when God is just offering us not just one attribute, but he's offering us the entire store. You see, if you just pursue patience, you might get it. But if you love God, you need patience too. And all the other attributes, if you love God first, all those other attributes become a part of who you are because you're His. And too often I think people strive for the good things in life without finding God. And you've found Him. And if you keep Him center of your relationship, life will be good, even when it's hard. When we love God first, because He is love, then you will possess all these and many more. Love God with, with all your hearts and above everything else. Yes, even your own life. Then and only then, life will begin to make sense. Loving God and then each other is the foundation to all life. You see, life is very, very simple. We complicate life. Continue in your pursuit of God, and He will more than define your life. He will give you a life that on your own you would never have gotten otherwise. Since love can be so easily misunderstood, I want you to listen to the source of love, God Himself. It is only fitting to refer to God's Word to understand this wonderful life-giving expression called love. Let the living Word of God speak to you again when He speaks His Word Follow. Let his words soak on your heart and on our hearts, all of us here together, as his word defines what life is all about.